In all honesty, it doesn't really matter how good William Samoy Ruto's manifesto is. If he makes the following mistakes, he will not be able to replicate Mwai Kibaki's success. Now before we get into the mistakes that William Ruto must avoid during his time as president, if you're here for the first time, please go on and hit the subscribe button. And if you're watching from a different platform, just head on over to YouTube. Search for David Wafula, I'll be the first one to pop up. Hit the subscribe button and you're going to be getting a ton of content of this nature. If politics is something you're passionate about, this is definitely the one channel that you really, really need to subscribe to. Mistake number one that William Ruto can make to his own detriment will be rewarding some of his allies with cabinet positions. Which allies am I talking about? There are some people who have helped William Ruto to clinch the presidency. That cannot be contested. But they themselves, despite all the assistance and aid they have given, be it financial or political capital, despite all that, some of them have a terrible track record. Some of these politicians are known to be corrupt. Some have even been kicked out of office. But despite all that, they've helped William Ruto. Now, if he makes the mistake of rewarding them with cabinet positions, it will eventually go all the way back and bite him. So William Ruto must avoid rewarding some of the people around him with cabinet positions. In my opinion, what he should do in the event that he feels he really needs to express gratitude to some of these people, give them a nice tender. We won't have a problem. If someone really helped you out, give them a tender worth two billion. Let them do a major highway. Let them enjoy the money. It is easier that way than to put somebody at the helm of an entire ministry, a ministry which is receiving an annual budget of something around 100 billion, and then 45 of those billions are squandered. So it is not everybody who is surrounding William Ruto today that deserves a cabinet position. William Ruto must really check on that and he must really ensure that he is appointing people of sound mind and people who are not known to be corrupt. The second mistake that William Ruto can make is waiting for his second term to make the necessary changes. This is something we saw President Uru Kenyatta doing. In his first term, he was behaving like a lame duck president. And when in fact he was a lame duck president is when he started to make those changes. So within his first term, if he notices that Cabinet Secretary X is not doing what is required of him, he ought to put this cabinet secretary on notice there and then, or to shuffle that person from one ministry to the other, or ultimately to just drop them completely. He ought to set the precedent that if you don't deliver, you go home. It doesn't matter if you're Kalenjin, Kikuyu, Kamba, or Luya, or whether you helped me move around this country to Ghana votes. If you don't deliver, you go home. Even if it's Musalia Mudavadi who has really helped William Ruto, if even he cannot deliver as chief minister, that should be the way of life for William Samoy Ruto. So that people get used to the fact that if you don't perform, you'll be put on notice or you will be transferred to another ministry or demoted or ultimately fired. And that will ultimately remove the element of laxity and it will improve government performance in the long run. Now mistake number three that William Ruto must avoid by any and all costs is engaging in succession politics. In 2032, whether William Ruto will be supporting Rigadi Gashagwa or whoever else will be there as an option, he ought to keep it to himself. He should not come out in public to support anybody. He should not be campaigning for anybody. He should simply let it play out like Moi Kibaki did. That way, no matter how the election goes, there is no egg on your face. But the moment you take sides, you open up all doors of possibilities. You could end up embarrassed in the public domain like President Moi and President Uru Kenyatta, or you could retire with your dignity like President Moi Kibaki. And I still do believe that Moi Kibaki deployed the system to aid President Uru Kenyatta. But he did so in silence. He did not yell at the top of buildings that, hey, vote for this guy or this guy. He simply just let it play out and he made his moves behind the scenes. He was nowhere to be found on that chessboard. He was watching from the crowd but still making moves. The fourth mistake that President William Ruto must avoid by all cost is excessive borrowing. President Uru Kenyatta is the master of public debt. He has borrowed so much money that at one point the IMF told us to slow down. In fact, as we speak, every child that is born is born with a national debt of over 100,000 on their backs. That is what it will take for us to come out of public debt. For every single child, adult, young or old, it doesn't matter, you need to pay 100,000 shillings for us to be out of debt. And we have not even factored in the interest. 
But those are just my opinions. I'd really love to hear what you have to say about the matter. So please leave me a comment in the comment section below. I'll do my best to read as many as I can and to respond to as many as possible. And also, if you're here for the first time, please go on and hit the subscribe button. And if you're watching from a different platform, just head on over to YouTube. Search for David Wafula. I'll be the first one to pop up. Hit the subscribe button and you're going to be getting a ton of content of this nature. If politics is something you're passionate about, this is definitely the one channel that you really, really need to subscribe to. Now, as I end the video, I'd like to recognize Joyce Lele and Rodney Gitonga for coming through to help put up the podcast studio, which should be going up in the next one or two months. I think we are moving at the right pace. Also, if you'd like to be a part of the wall and you're not acquainted, please go on and watch this video. Many of you have asked me what's next for this channel and what we can do to make it bigger and better. Today, I would like to answer that question. On the short term, I intend to continue keeping you abreast on all matters politics. But on the long term, it's my dream to have this turn into a full-on political podcast where we'll do three things. Number one, analyze governments, political ideas, policies, trends, and foreign relations. Number two, we hope to interview politicians from any and all dockets of public service, be it governors, senators, members of parliament, and even MCAs, with the aim of dissecting their policies and presenting you the opportunity to hear from your local leaders and to question them directly. Number three, I intend to host some of you who are passionate about politics and would like to have a platform where you can share your opinions freely without necessarily being a household name. However, to achieve all this, we'll need a couple of things. We'll need microphones, cameras, lighting, computers, editing software, and mixers. And hopefully, by the grace of God, when it's all said and done, we're going to have something that looks like this, or this, or even this. But as we all know, Rome wasn't built in a day, so we'll start off with what we have and build upon that foundation as time goes by. So if you'd like to chip in towards this dream, feel free to wire in your donation through M-Pesa number 011-538-2900 or bank account number 011-0857-659-3900. Also, there's an interesting concept that I would like us to borrow. On the walls of St. Michael's Golden Domed Monastery in Kyiv, there's around 4,500 portraits of fallen soldiers who died defending Ukraine from the invading army of Russia's Vladimir Putin. So I also intend to keep and maintain a wall at the podcast studio with the names and images of everybody who made it happen. It's kind of like my own small way of honoring those who chipped in and also so that everybody who walks into that studio, they don't take it for granted. They get to know that, hey, you see all these images up here? These are the guys who made it happen. So it's not a self-made story. It's a more of a people's project, if you will. So once again, thank you for tuning in. It's always a pleasure to have you. Do have yourself a great day. Adios.